I arrived in Tuzla 20th of June 1995. And just to be precise about the, the investigation, the investigation is about the events that unfolded after the 11 July noon. So it's not an investigation about uh, why airstrikes or no airstrikes, not uh, an investigation on the takeover of the en enclave. It's only about the criminal events that followed the, the fall of the enclave. Establishing the facts um, f follows a kind of natural chronology. Uh, the first step is uh, reconstructing the events uh, through the interviews of uh, the victims, mm -hmm. the witnesses, but also at a later stage uh, through the eyes of the perpetrators who also enter the interview process. Then the second phase is to find uh, the places the, the people are talking about, which is not uh, necessarily very obvious. And all this has to be done in a, in a hostile environment, in a work conditions which are not uh, usual in a normal uh, environment. After this, uh, the, the other additional phase is to process these crime scenes uh, by taking pictures, videos, documenting them, but also taking samples, uh, process all these samples through labs. So that's the what we call the um, technical uh, and scientific police uh, aspect of it. So returning on the thing, this is the map we are going to use. Uh, bottom right is the Srebrenica enclave, and all this uh, territory is in fact the crime scene. So it's a crime scene of 70 kilometers north-south, 40 kilometers east-west, uh, uh, dotted with um, concentration spots of prisoners, detention sites, execution sites, primary mass graves, and then later, as we will see, secondary mass graves. So 11 July, as you uh, already know, the uh, population took uh, two courses of action. All those who uh, didn't uh, want to leave the enclave and thought they had not so, many, so much to fear from the Bosnian Serbs left uh, in order to find shelter uh, at the UN base in Potocari. Meanwhile, all the able men, uh, the members uh, um, of the 28th Division, regrouped uh, in the area of Susanjari uh, in order to then uh, break uh, through uh, the lines in, uh, through a minefield, so an on column uh, that uh, left the area during the night between the 11 and the 12 July. The night uh, of the 11 and the 12 in Potocari was quiet. Then 12 July, the forcible transfer uh, starts through, uh, through this road, uh, first towards Konievich Polje, then towards Velasenica, ending up uh, at uh, Kladang, uh, reaching uh, uh, the Muslim-held uh, territory. Meanwhile, um, the, head, the spearhead of uh, the column, which was uh, formed mainly by uh, armed, uh, armed men, uh, could go through the lines at uh, the level of the area of Konievich Polje towards uh, Serska. But after that, the area was sealed uh, by the Bosnian Serb army. So the first to be taken uh, out of the, uh, of the enclave armed the men who were in uh, Potocari the 12. And these ones, in fact, we learned that later on uh, through uh, the guilty plea of uh, the intelligence and security officer of the Zvornik Brigade were taken to the football field in Bratunac, where all those who wanted to take revenge uh, on them uh, could do it. So all these people were killed uh, on the football field, uh, and, Mir and Momir Nikolic uh, killed a few of them, uh, according to his admittance. The other ones were first taken to uh, a hangar, which is a hangar behind the, the, the school named uh, Vuk Karadzic. During the night, uh, approximately 50 of them were murdered uh, in this place. On July 13, the evacuation uh, continues, as you, as you know. Uh, during the night between uh, the 12 and the 13, a certain number of uh, murders uh, occurred uh, in uh, Potocari. Uh, Poto the Potocari uh, area was not uh, designed uh, to be a murder place, but all these murders were done in the effect to uh, scare the population and um, make them, in fact, uh, rush towards the buses and the trucks in order to be evacuated. On this, uh, in the course of this transportation, as it was already said, there were checkpoints where uh, m the men were taken out, and in case uh, some other additional men were, were still I mean, able to, uh, to go up to the end, they were separated uh, at um, the, the crossing towards Cladden, and they were taken to a little elementary school, school named Luque. 
So uh, I will not talk about the fate of the column. This is um, for the criminal investigation uh, part of, the, let's say, the military history. We will focus on uh, the fate of those who are under the custody of the Boston Serb Army. So as, as, as I said, uh, the all those who could not cross uh, the area uh, towards uh, Nedzuk, they, were, uh, they are trapped now uh, in the area in the of uh, Nova Kasaba uh, on in the hills. And uh, during uh, that day, the Boston Serb Army uh, is using stolen equipment uh, from uh, the Dutch battalion, wearing uh, blue helmets and calling the people to surrender, giving uh, fake uh, guarantees of security. So one uh, main uh, surrender spot in this area is uh, the area of Nova Kasaba. The football field uh, we already talked about. This is a, a photograph uh, dated 13 July, 14 hours where you can see uh, groups of people uh, gathered uh, on the football field and you can also see uh, uh, buses on the road, um, columns of buses. Another um, detention spot at this moment, regroupment spot, is the military facility of uh, the 65th uh, Protection uh, Regiment of Mladic, where a few Dutch soldiers were also in custody and this is how uh, we learned uh, about the presence of of uh, these prisoners, these other prisoners. Uh, additional spot is the inter intersection of uh, Konievich Polier, uh, where the prisoners were taken either to uh, this uh, hangar that we you can see on the on the photograph, or to a military facility which is at the at the right of the, the unit of the picture. Along the road, the people who uh, were in the woods. Uh, and uh, who uh, decided to surrender uh, during the day of the 13. They were coming downhill. Uh, there were several meadows where they were regrouped. One of these main meadows is the meadows of Sandici. Where here we have another photograph dated 13 July and uh, all the little dots that you can see, that you can see here, these ones, they are people. And there is a slope, so in fact you cannot uh, really assess the number here because there is a, a long slope and uh, there are more people uh, in reality on this photograph than one can could imagine on, uh, on the picture. So this is the indeed the field and uh, in the little corner here, is in this is in connection with the, the, the film that you saw, it's precisely here. So all of this, and here is the slope, so all of this is an area that was covered with prisoners knowing that this was an instant photograph and that this meadow was used not only once during the day. Finally, uh, Bratunac continues to be uh, a regrouping spot for the, the men uh, taken from uh, Potocari. So this uh, slide shows in fact all the regroupment spots of the prisoners d at the day of 13 July. With all these sites, and we, ha we are now connecting with uh, execution spots knowing that the 13th July, um, though the executions are sometimes massive, was a very disorganized uh, process. And more or less, as I unfortunately used to say, um, all those who were keeping prisoners had the right to kill whoever they wanted. Going from left uh, to, to right, not necessarily in a chronology, uh, those who were at the little school in, um, in Luque were taken on board of little trucks and um, driven uh, north of Vlasenica, where they were executed. One man survived, but on this spot we could never, I mean, at least until uh, 2001, uh, later I don't know, but we could not find uh, the, um, the mass grave. Executions at Nova Kasaba. So um, Nova Kasaba was not a main execution spot, nevertheless. Uh, one witness um, reported about uh, having uh, seen uh, three times a group of approximately 30 people being taken to a meadow. He could see that being uh, at the bottom of a pylon in between two houses. And uh, these groups were uh, shot by, uh, by soldiers who were uh, on the road on the top of APCs, including one UN APC. And he saw that three times successive successively. After that, he left. It took us a, a very long time, in fact, to find this spot because we had to find bullets in the, in the soil. And in reality, we started from the search from uh, the intersection of Konievich Polier, where there was a pylon, two houses, was unsuccessful. 
and every year during uh, five years we continued towards south in order to try to find it and we found it in 2001 in reality it's very close to uh, these uh, areas of disturbed soil and it is connected with uh, with them uh, for part of it and uh, then the place was exhumed so that's the execution site in fact at, uh, at uh, Nova Casaba here are additional uh, areas of destroyed, disturbed soil, which uh, then were confirmed as being mass graves. I'm on the right of this picture. Here we uncover, in fact, uh, six bodies, uh, because we each time we hit an area that we, ex we expect to be or we uh, think is a mass grave, we have to expose more than one body uh, in order then to put it on the exhumation plan, and then it's the exhumation team that comes to conduct the, uh, the exhumation. On this spot, uh, General Mladic uh, said, because these pictures were released publicly by Madeleine Albright uh, at, the, um, at the UN uh, Assembly, and he said that these were, um, there were indeed bodies inside, but there were uh, soldiers that were shot uh, during combat activity. So uh, we are now back on this um, primary mass grave at Nova Casaba about which at the time uh, in 96 uh, General Mladic uh, said that uh, it was uh, bodies of uh, Boston, uh, Boston, um, of um, Muslim soldiers uh, killed in combat. The problem about it uh, is that as you can see the bodies we, we that were found had all the hands uh, attached uh, in the back. So here again uh, additional sites uh, in, in this area where the exhumation uh, on, uh, on these ones uh, showed again uh, people with the hands attached in the back. And uh, as it was said in the previous film, uh, indeed, uh, some were uh, shot uh, inside the grave since the bullets were found uh, underneath uh, the bodies who were at the bottom of the grave. Some uh, also had the hands attached in the back with uh, this type of uh, ligatures. So in the uh, Konievich Polier, uh, again, uh, not a massive execution site, but many executions there were witnessed by, uh, by persons who could then report it to uh, the investigators. Among those um, witness uh, accounts, uh, some uh, men were indeed uh, forced uh, to dig a hole, uh, their own grave, and shot inside. We did search uh, a fair amount of time for to, to check this type of information, and uh, indeed at one point uh, found uh, one of these uh, situations. The uh, archaeologists uh, who um, worked on this uh, site found this uh, single body and could assess that uh, he lied in a hole that was dug by hand. One witness uh, who was uh, kept in, the, in this uh, warehouse at the intersection of Konievich Polier was taken on board of a bus. The day I took this picture, strangely, there was a bus here and they were taken towards the, in towards the Drignatsha Valley where they were shot, uh, it was a group of 12, and they were shot along the riverbank. Uh, there is one survivor on this spot. Again, here, implementation of uh, witness testimonies. In fact, um, a series of witnesses who were reported having seen uh, three buses entering uh, the valley, escorted by APCs, uh, and then later followed by a, a small excavator. It took a, a, a while to find the spot. But nevertheless, we could uh, identify the, the place, and uh, in fact, the crime scene is here. The people were lined along the, the edge of this slope. The killers were on this part. Here we found all the shell casings. And here we are doing the probe uh, prior the uh, exhumation process in order to identify the length of this uh, grave. And uh, the probes were positive, bodies were underneath. And on this spot, uh, the exhumation uh, uncovered 150 persons precisely, all of them with the hands attached in the back and some had also the feet attached. Kravitsa is the, um, the main spot, in fact, of the executions in the area that we call Area South. It's the, um, some of the men who were kept on the meadow at Sandici were taken, you know, those who uh, can be seen on the, the film we, you saw before, they were taken uh, the first one by bus towards the Kravitsa warehouse with about one kilometer um, at, the, um, at the east and the others were marched toward the warehouse. They were put for the first ones in this area here. One bus blocked the entrance there. 
The other ones were marched through uh, this door. This door was closed. And once indeed all the people were inside, uh, fire was opened on them by all the openings, grenades thrown inside, and all the people inside uh, were killed. Uh, there is one survivor at the east part of the warehouse and one survivor in the west part of the warehouse. And this is how we know about the details of uh, the process in which I will not enter, it will be too long. But inside the um, scientific police process uh, found uh, <coughs> an incredible amount of uh, evidence, uh <coughs> traces of uh, grenade explosions, uh, uh, human uh, blood, uh, hair, skin, and uh, a lot of uh, things. And uh, as you know, there was a little, uh, a few seconds of a video uh, shot by uh, Zoran Petrovic that he did then uh, hide uh, as evidence, but that was very useful uh, for the trial of um, Colonel Borovchana, who was the head of the Special Police uh, Brigade who uh, committed uh, this uh, execution. There were a few live pictures. Uh, the only, in fact, live pictures of uh, these uh, executions in this area. So here now you have a summary of uh, the, um, the killing uh, sites in the area south. So at the end of the day of 13, um, all the prisoners who were still uh, stored on these uh, concentration spots were all shipped towards Bratunats. Uh, we know from one witness, uh, who unfortunately uh, never testified because he didn't want, that those, uh, at least on the meadow where he was, when there was no more transportation mean at the end of the day, they were killed on the spot. The main facilities used in Bratunats uh, are the three places, the Vukaradzic school, the first arrow, uh, the hangar, the second one, and uh, the uh, so-called uh, old school, which was a technical school. Once all these buildings were full, Three lines of buses were, I mean, we can at least spot three of them. One was lined here in, f in front of a Vihor compound. One was here in the street and in the front of Vukaradzic school. And the last one was in front of uh, Bratunas brigade. And there was one also at the uh, exit of the town over there. The reason is that there was no, no more uh, f detention facilities in town. The town was packed with uh, prisoners in the evening of uh, 13. So that's uh, the back of the Vukaradzic school, that's the hangar where people were already taken, the, the 12, and that's the uh, old school. So indeed on 14 July, that's when the, um, the organized process uh, starts. The day before, the security officers of Adrena Corps drove uh, north in the area of Zvornik in order to identify detention sites, which in fact are, are schools and nearby execution sites. So the first ones were indeed taken uh, towards Vornik and they were put in the Gerbavsi school, which is here the little uh, round circle. Inside the gym that we can see at the left of the picture. The gym was full of prisoners. They were taken out through this uh, opening where the colleague is currently checking things and taken by a uh, truck towards an execution uh, place uh, nearby, which is named Oraovats. And this is the place where I told you, without aerial imagery, we would never have been able to find it, because it's behind the railroad line, uh, the first execution. So here is a picture I told you about. As you can see on 5th July, that's the road that leads towards the Gerbavsi school. Then you have a dirt road. It goes under the railroad. And here is the first execution site. Once this site was full, they moved uh, the, the ammunition and said, OK, let's continue it here. And then they do it here. And as you can see here, it's thanks to this imagery comparison that we could, fi could find the place. Here is the first one, and here is the second one. The first one behind the railroad, and the second one. At the school, when we did the search, the full search of it, in a bunch of, uh, uh, of stuff, we could find a lot of um, blindfolds. All these blindfolds were then sent to uh, the Dutch um, Royal uh, Laboratory, sorted out by colors, texture, and so on. And this was later used in order to uh, compare uh, with the primary sites with the secondary sites. And for example, here is one of Lazete II, which has a, a blindfold on him. The, bl the blindfolds we found were the, the leftover. So that same day, um, 
Another convoy brings the prisoners to the school of uh, Petkovshi. This is the school of Petkovshi. I don't enter the details of what happened inside, but they were taken to, um, to the dam of um, an artificial lake, which is in fact the, uh, the waste of the aluminum factory of uh, Karakai. And on the dam, the executioners were waiting for them, telling them to step uh, among the dead bodies, and they were shot. Uh, two, two men survived uh, from uh, this execution. That same day, day also, the evacuation of uh, the prisoners from Bratunovs continues, and the uh, prisoners are taken to the school of Rochevich. And this, this day, the 15, is also the, <laughs> the burial of the uh, Oraovats victims um, into the two mass graves that we saw previously. Yeah. So 15 July, the process continues. The prisoners were inside the school of Rochevich were taken uh, to next to the river bank of uh, the Drina Valley, where the execution takes place uh, in this uh, area. It's gravel pits and also an, an area where the Vitinka factory, which is an embottlement factory of uh, sparkling water, uh, dumps all the broken glass. We found this broken glass in the primary site and this broken glass was also found in the secondary sites, which was one element uh, to connect the sites each with another. So here again, uh, this uh, body has the, the hands attached uh, in the back. As you can see here, as well as uh, bodies were, were found blindfolded. The process uh, continues, and uh, during the day of the 15, a very large uh, column of buses brings the prisoners towards the school of, uh, of uh, Luque. The end of uh, the evening, uh, the school was uh, so full of prisoners that when one bus arrived, uh, the people were killed uh, on the spot. They couldn't enter the school. This is the Luque school. As you can see, it's a large school with a very big uh, gymnasium. And the final uh, spot where the persons were taken, since all the schools were, uh, of the areas were uh, used and uh, full of prisoners, they were taken to the Dom Culture of Pilica, which is this uh, building here. The following day, 16, the prisoners inside the Luke school were told that they were, would be uh, taken for uh, exchange of prisoners, blindfolded, but they were brought to the nearby Branievo farm, which is a military farm belonging to the Boston Serb army, where uh, a team of killers from the 10th sabotage unit, which is a, a unit um, directly attached to the main staff of the Boston Serb army, was waiting for them. They were under the command for the, this occasion of the security officer of the Drina Corps, uh, Colonel Popovich, Lieutenant Colonel Popovich. And at that moment, uh, the process of exhuming the bodies continues from south to north. Kozluk are buried there. At that moment, are buried nearby the Drina Valley. So that's a document, a transcript of the intercepted communication, where Popovich is calling uh, an intelligence officer who is he at the Drina Corps and requesting 500 liters of uh, diesel in order to uh, continue uh, the work. So that's an additional element that confirms uh, the things. And uh, here is the, the log that we found during the search of the headquarters of the Zvornik Brigade, where we have uh, the delivery of the fuel uh, to Colonel Popovich. And this is the crime scene area. The buses were taking the prisoners through this little uh, road inside, and then they were marched along uh, this place, this was the rest place of the, the murderers, and then they were lined up in rows, and the process continued on a large distance. The burial site we, we will see is there. Again, a body uh, with uh, hands uh, attached uh, in the back. Once this uh, process was over, Popovich came back, requested uh, the team to go conduct the killing at the Pilic Dome of Culture, saying that there were 500 people uh, inside. And this is the, the area. This is the building, and this is the entrance of it. In fact, they started another door going upstairs, and that's from where the shooting started, on the people inside. Grenades were thrown under the, the place here where people were hiding. 
and again, the place was fully uh, processed uh, scientific police. There is no survivor on this spot. Without uh, the testimony of Drazen Erdemovic, uh, we would never have known anything about uh, this crime scene. And the bodies of uh, this um, killing site were transported towards the Branievo farm to be buried together with the bodies of the Branievo farm. Branievo farm, we know from Drazen Erdemovic, his assessment is 1,200. The killings uh, started around 10 and finished at 3 p.m. indeed, as the, the previous film said it. So on 17 July, it's the finalization, in fact, of the burial process. And here we have a picture, it's the only aerial imagery on which we can see uh, bodies. The, the burial process is ongoing at this moment. The bodies are taken here, beside the mass grave. That's the access ramp, that's the mud of, uh, there is a mound of bodies also. And uh, here, bodies that are not already picked up by uh, an excavator who then buries them here. So that's all the crime scenes of the area north, and as one can see, uh, 200 meters above the, the last uh, killing spot, uh, it's the borderline of the Drina core with uh, the core which is more north. So all the crime scenes are in the on the area of responsibility of the Drina core. That's all the detention sites and killing sites and mass graves. That's the mass grave area for all the uh, Srebrenica crime scene on the 17th of July. Nevertheless, indeed, uh, end of September, beginning of October, a massive uh, process, uh, as massive as the killing process itself, starts in order to um, take out most of the bodies of the mass graves, in order to hide them in remote valleys, where uh, it's stuffed of uh, landmines, uh, no returnees, in order to hide them, and uh, leaving inside the primary graves uh, just a little amount of bodies in order to, in case we would find them, uh, make us believe that uh, if the witnesses said the truth, we were tremendously exaggerating the numbers. That's the exhumation at Branievo. Here on, at Branievo farm, uh, where all the bodies of the killing of Branievo happened, plus all of the bodies of uh, Pilica Domov culture were dumped into. Only 110 bodies were found, but uh, the archaeologists continued the work. This is the, the, site, the, the size of the mass grave. It's even a bit bigger because the photograph is taken from where I stand, and the place where the bodies were found was limited to this little mound here. But this is the full size of the grave. So, in fact, uh, the bodies of uh, Branievo farm, I'm going to use nearly only slide, were taken to the Cianciare Valley. It's a long valley, eight kilometers long, in between uh, Zvornik and uh, Konievich Poly, let's say, roughly. Nine secondary graves were uh, dug for this, support, this uh, site. And this is uh, aerial imagery showing the entire valley. The three first ones, in fact, uh, are from the Kozluk site. That's the exhumation of Chanchari 12. So indeed it's a junk, it's a very complex work for those who are doing the exhumation, but we cannot enter too much the details. Those of Kozluk, as I said, taken at the beginning of the Chanchari Valley. In fact, the process most probably went from uh, south to north, but it's another detail. So here, those from the school of Petkovshi, uh, from the dam, sorry, uh, were taken to the area named uh, Liplier, four graves that we can see here on aerial imagery. And those of um, the Gerbavsi school, the two graves, that school, were taken to the road we call uh, Hodzici. That's the aerial imagery for these secondary sites. So this is the map of the main uh, mass graves areas and the result in terms of uh, spreading of the bodies. For the area south, the situation is a little bit different. Uh, most of the graves were not disturbed. Those of Noca Nova Kasaba were not disturbed because they were already, uh, there was public information about them, so no need, uh, no possibility, uh, and no need to do it. Those of the Siaska Valley, only 150 bodies, one would say, only. So maybe no need uh, to disturb them, to disturb the site. 
uh, all the bodies of uh, the killings in Bratunats, all the killings uh, that happened along the road, and uh, the killing of uh, Kravitsa warehouse, the bodies were taken to a, a, a big site uh, uh, at Glogova, which is the main mass grave of the area south. And that mass grave was also fully uh, disturbed. We have imagery even of the disturbance. And the bodies were taken to the opposite of the Srebrenica enclave, totally at the south, in the behind Zeleni Yadar, nearby a minefield. This is the spreading of these bodies, all the sites. So finally, here we have the map with uh, all, the, all the crime scenes, with the execution sites. Um, the only thing missing on this one are the detention sites, but they are connected with the uh, execution sites, with the primary and the secondary mass graves. So this is the, the process. And uh, all of this, I mean, the secondary site, the, all the primary sites we found them during the year 1996, and all the secondary sites were found during the year 1997. And all these secondary sites were handed over to the Bosnian authorities when I left in April 2001 for continuation of the exhumation. The work of uh, ICTY on these sites was over in terms of uh, uh, needs for criminal evidence and uh, the trial of uh, all the individuals who were charged uh, for these events. So the in terms of ICTY, the main responsible individuals.